That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Horseplay, which is the 10th oh, uh, wow. project directed by Argentinian filmmaker Marco Berger, which premiered at the 2022 Karlovy Vary Film Festival. Uh, it is being released courtesy of Dark Star Pictures, June 2nd, 2023. Do you know Marco's other films? You know, I've seen his debut, Plan B. Uh, from 2009, which I remember liking well enough. Uh, he had another project called The Blonde One from 2019 that I've been meaning to watch for years now, but never have. Uh, Isn't there a Hulu movie called Plan B? Those yes. Two ladies? The, yeah, yeah, that's a different Plan B. Uh, there's also, I, I think his breakthrough was uh, his 2011 film Absent, uh, which played at the Berlin Film Festival. Uh, he also uh, co-directed... A film called Sexual Tension, Volatile, which is dealing with some similar male bonding boundary erasure issues as this film. So I saw this trailer a year ago, mm -hmm. I believe, and it made me very uncomfortable. And I think the film, this film is successful in <clears throat> making you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the story, a group of young men at a gathering in a luxury villa test each other's boundaries so it's this group of guys staying in this luxury villa it's owned by the family of one of the guys and they're there during the christmas season but they're in south america i would assume they're outside of buenos aires yeah so the weather is very nice it's warm which is important because all we see are these guys basically naked and in the pool like at all times. Mm -hmm. It must be hot because they sleep naked together. Like, But the first hour of the film is them horse playing. Mm -hmm. So they're basically hazing each other like a bunch of frat guys. Mm -hmm. And it all culminates with there being sort of an act of violence against one of the guys from another when he finds out that he's like bisexual basically. The end. It's very simple. It is very simple. Uh, it takes a long time for us to focus on someone in particular. And by within the past half hour is where this kind of triangulation happens between three particular characters. Uh, but it, even that focus seems very off kilter. So this is a hard one because I, was, I, I ended the film not being satisfied because... I think some really interesting conversations within the film could have happened and they didn't. So it doesn't really take us anywhere. We're just watching a group of guys act really immature and... And do more gay things than gay men would do if they were together. So, for so, so my first thought, I don't have any proximity to straight men, so I don't know if this behavior is normal for young men in a group. You do. I do. Uh, and you say it is. And then playing sports and being on sports teams, that locker room behavior, it's a way to act on intimacies that would otherwise not be, that would be prohibited. Uh, and, and not, aren't always sexual even though like genitalia <laughs> is involved uh but but again it's a way for uh, uh, intimacy in a homosocial space by playing grab ass so that makes sense to me even though i, I can't relate to it uh, watching it it just felt like this shit is so gay for a bunch of guys who are so worried about everything being gay and some of them seem quite homophobic it just is confusing but i think that's where the film drops the ball because I kind of wanted someone to confront that topic. We do get a couple of characters mentioning it. There's a guy. So one of the characters is talking to another. So the two guys are talking and the one is like, oh, some gay guy followed me on Instagram. Isn't that gross? And then the other friend's like, are you for real? Like, what do you think? He wants you? Like, what if I were gay? Like, you wouldn't be my friend anymore? And then that conversation just kind of ends. That's And it's also the only rational conversation from a male character in, in, the this, film. in this film. And then we get a woman, because at, at one point, the guys invite a group of ladies over. And one of the women is talking about how hypocritical it is that woman on, like in pornography, two women having sex is, con is more normalized than two men having sex. Because then it has to be labeled as like gay or bisexual. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to talk to the group and some people agree, some don't. But then that kind of goes nowhere. It goes nowhere. And also one of the men responds by saying, well, 
this doesn't even matter because pornography is made explicitly for the consumption of men. Yeah, like he makes a statement and then that's done. Then the guy who commits the act of violence in the end, he has a girlfriend. Nico. Mm -hmm. And Nico's kind of the leader of the group. He's not the one whose family owns the house, but he seems to be like the alpha of the group. They like to take... There could be a game for how many times... uh, these guys say something's gay or homo. Although I think the translation from Spanish is not quite accurate. Like the subtitles say homo or gay. But my understanding of the Spanish language, maybe it's different for that region. They're using more derogatory language. I think that the, the subtitles are sanitized, yeah. But all they do is talk about gay, gay, this is gay, this is homo, homo, homo. And then they like to talk about let's take a homo photo. Mm-hmm. And so all these fools do is gay shit, like putting their fingers in each other's butts and playing with their penises, pretending to put penises in mouth. It's too much. But anyway, not only do they take these pictures, these dummies like to share them in group chats, and then these pictures get leaked. Mm -hmm. And Nico, the leader, his girlfriend, has seen these photos, and she doesn't like it. She's concerned. She's concerned. So she actually shows up to the house as scheduled, And then I'm thinking, like, oh, she's going to confront him. She just says, like, I don't like you taking these pictures. What if your dad saw these? So, two things. It's like, I would love to hear from straight women who, you know, preferably have seen the film. And, like, how would they react? It's as crazy to me as, like, Master Gardener. How the black female character is okay with, like, the white supremacist guy. Like, there's no resolve. Like, this woman is just like, so your boyfriend... Is like with all these guys and all they do is gay shit. But that's a part, that's a facet of human behavior is you see what you want to see. Sure. So again, another very interesting topic that the film doesn't really want to get into. It's like they bring up all these really great talking points, but then it just... There's also a sexual assault that happens against a woman. And that just kind of gets like... No mention. That there's no resolve because she definitely from the, from the clip we see that that is what was happening. Well, then we're told later that by one of her girlfriends that she was very upset mm-hmm. on the drive home. She even had to get out and vomit. Mm-hmm. So it's like clearly this woman was assaulted, and yeah, we get nothing. Um, but I should just go through my notes really quickly. My first thought is this is just a straight up sausage fest. Yeah. Like, so I think if you like attractive men and seeing them naked, I guess this film would be like appealing to you um then not only do we have to see them doing all the gay stuff and taking pictures of it but at one point we see the one character who we assume is gay um going through his phone looking through all the gay photos mm-hmm. it's just it is overwhelming and that, that that's that triangulation at the end there is a, a repressed homosexual that is kind of the one that's demeaned Polly is his name. And then Andy is the kind of unabashed bisexual, but in, in that Roy Cohn kind of way that's like, I do gay shit, but you're not going to call me gay. And he's the one that is attacked. attacked at the end by Nico. We, I mean, again, with violence and gay shit, we hear a story. Like, if it's not enough that we have to see it, then we get photos of it. Then we get stories about it, like at a party, there are a bunch of guys like at a stag party and they're all naked and some guy, because they're like at an auto body shop Mm -hmm. and some guy shoves like an air compressor in another guy's ass, which causes his insides to explode. I I just, I guess I'm confused what the message, like, like what's the, what are we talking about? I think that for a certain part of like heterosexual males, like talking about this taboo thing, but so aggressively and so head on that you kind of, uh, rob it of any s- sort of intimacy and that makes it okay. Sure. I mean, when you explain it, it makes sense. I just wish the film would have maybe helped guide me a little more. Sure. Because I, I, like, I really was just sitting here like, this doesn't make... Why are these guys being so gay? They're in this enormous, huge, very, like, luxe villa that surely has multiple bedrooms. And they all sleep in the same room, piled on top Mm -hmm. of each other. They're all naked for the most part. Or they'll have, like, a t-shirt on, but no pants. Like, their penis is just hanging out. Like, I don't even understand how they got there. Like, how did this make sense? To them, it does. (laughs) But but again, I think the major crime the film has is... Because it's about an hour, 40-some minutes. It does 
feel a bit tedious. I don't know. Yeah, it took too long. It, 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 it takes too long to get to the points where like we think we're going to have interesting conversations and then they don't happen. And then I think that the end of the act of violence is also a bit too obvious. So when Nico... So Nico goes into Polly's room because he wants cigarettes and weed. So he goes into Polly's backpack and he sees that Polly has condoms and that the condom box, you know, they come in threes and one is missing. So of course, you know, like, oh, like immediately like he's going to find a condom and there are no women here. So what, who did he use it on? So then he knows that Polly and the bisexual one went out the night before camping. So of course he gets to their little campsite and he sees a fragment of a condom wrapper and this fool digs in the trash and pulls out a condom that is filled with semen mm-hmm. and then confronts his friend like, what is this? You had sex. And then the friend is like, well, you know, I like to... He's like, I like sex. I like, well, he used a different word. Like, I, he basically likes intercourse and so it's no big deal. And then, yeah. his f- And then the friend Nico admits, like, or that to the audience, we know that they have been sexual themselves together. When they were teenagers. When they were teenagers. We see them have a threesome with a woman, but then they say, like, we don't touch each other. But then, in this pivotal moment, moment at the end, we find out as teenagers that they were quite intimate sexually. Hopped up on Molly, but yeah. And then he all of a sudden, like, bashes him in the head with a baseball bat. I don't know, I just... I mean, I guess, like, you interpreted a lot of things in a way that made sense, and maybe the filmmaker wants us to do that, but I think for someone like me, who has no proximity to straight men, it just felt more like, oh, a gay guy made, a, like, like, a fantasy film about straight guys together. Like, I wonder what this would have looked like if they would have cast more, like, regular-looking dudes. Sure. I feel like the vibe would have been very different because all for the most part, all these guys are really good looking. Maybe that's just that that's the Argentinian that that the, that's what they look like. No, but then it, but then it kind of took me out because if you told me any or all of these guys were actually gay, I'd be like, oh yeah, they seem like they would be like I don't know. It just something is missing for me. I agree, something is missing, and or maybe it's just from our mutual perspectives. Maybe I needed a little more because to me that was a little too obvious. But uh, and you had brought up a good point about like what if <clears throat> a heterosexual director had approached this the same way, and I I wonder what more would mm-hmm. be hidden or what more kind of subconscious elements would just inadvertently come out, uh, as in yeah. m- like I think back in my own life having lived through experiences in a group like this uh, behind the scenes with things going on that nobody really wants to talk about honestly. Yeah. Well, what would you give this film? Uh, I think two out of five. I would give it two out of five. It does look really nice. It's well shot. It, it needed to be more provocative. I There's think. a lot of eye candy, but yeah, it needed more substance. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Bye.